<laughs> hey guys, Pest and Lawn Ginger back. It's January, the snow has finally come. We've got snow on the mountains and we've got ice all over driveways and walkways. Uh, today's topic is ice melt. You're doing it wrong. Uh, most of our expectations I'm finding are not realistic to what the products do and how they function. So today's simple video uh, will be how do you pick the proper product out for the application and how do you apply it correctly? Uh, again, please hit the subscribe button on my channel. I uh, want to make sure that I can continually do these videos uh, and hit the like button if you like what I have to say. Here we go. So I know we've all had this experience. We walk into the stores and we see everything on the ground or on the shelves and we're not too sure what to do. And I think most of us just look at the temperature rating and go, I want that one because the temperature rating is really low. Now there is a lot of truth to that. Um, if you look at these, these are just your pure salts. Um, they go down to negative 18. Um, just to clarify what that means is these ratings should allow to melt the ice down to uh, those temperatures and that's air temperature not ground temperature um, the problem that we face is, is the salts over here on the left you can add about 10 to 15 degrees and anything below that temperature uh, so let's say negative five it's really not going to move much when you get into your magnesium chlorides and your calcium chlorides it'll still function it'll still melt uh, the way that you want it to um, so there's there's a couple of issues with the salt. Number one, um, if you live in an area that is usually around 30 degrees, nighttime temperatures 20 degrees, salt is a really inexpensive way to control the ice. Um, about the only thing that you really need to focus on is, is it going to fit inside your spreader? Uh, so this one has really nice uh, granular that will fit into a spreader and it'll come out really easy where if you don't have a bigger device, uh, you look at this uh, ice bomb here, and it's got a dye on it, and that's why it's purple, just so you can see where you're applying it, which is nice. Um, but you can see as you apply it in here, it's gonna get stuck, um, and that's about the only problem. So if you're not using a traditional, uh, say, push spreader, uh, like they have one sitting here, um, probably wouldn't buy that with a handheld spreader. The difference between coarse and fine, your coarse is going to provide traction for your feet and your vehicles. So if you want something that's going to be a little bit easier to drive on right off the bat, you want to go with the coarse. Now moving on to these products, uh, some of these are dual products. So this one is straight magnesium chloride. Now once you get to the magnesium chloride and the calcium chloride, you can really de depend on the temperature setting. So this one, for instance, pure magnesium chloride is negative 15 degrees and pure calcium chloride works to negative 25 degrees. Now you obviously wouldn't want to um, really depend on that with a pure salt because the salts just don't react chemically to the water like magnesium chloride and calcium chloride. Your magnesium chloride and calcium chloride you'll actually see a bump in temperature and I'll show you that with the thermometer here in just a second. Now the purple heat actually has magnesium chloride in it. Now if you look though, the, the temperature rating on this is only negative 13 and this one is negative 15 with a pure magnesium chloride and you're probably wondering why. Well, they just top coat it. So the outer exterior layer is top coated with magnesium chloride and then it goes to salt. So it is not a true magnesium chloride. Now the turbo, it's an interesting product. It's only rated to negative seven, but if you live in an area that gets down to zero degrees and you're looking for a good performing salt, choose the turbo um, because it does have not only magnesium chloride, but calcium chloride and it's blended all the way through. It's got a nice, uh, I'll show you here, it's got a nice fine granular here. So it melts really quickly and it's safe for concrete um, and applications uh, as such. And you wanna read the label to be 100% sure. Now your magnesium chloride and your uh, Pelidow is what they call it, which is calcium chloride. Um, these are great products. Um, I personally, I like the calcium chloride over the magnesium chloride simply for the fact that the calcium chloride has a temperature boost 
in the water, it actually heats itself up, uh, which I will show you here. Um, the magnesium chloride in this application, um, and you'll see they actually went with a granular that almost looks like uh, miniature pieces of shale. Um, from what we've experienced is it kind of gets a, a little dusty um, after it melts and you can track it on your feet. That would be the only downside to it. So if you're going to use it, which is a great product, it works really well. Um, just take your shoes off before you go in the house. Um, same thing with the pellet out. Um, sticking my hand in here, uh, you can see it's just dusty. Um, and that would be the only drawback to it. Uh, but that's kind of the breakdown of that. Um, most of these products, and you do want to understand, they have to be applied at the manufacturer's recommended settings. So, for instance, the, the purple heat here um, and the ice bomb has to be applied 14 to 16 pounds per 100 square feet. That's a 10 by 10 area. So if you look at these seams uh, in, the, in the ground here, this area right here is about a 10 by 10 foot area. And this bag here is 14 pounds. I mean, it's, it's a lot of granular through this whole thing. So you can see it's a lot of granular for a small space. All right guys, so for our reliability test, we're just gonna keep this simple. Uh, the recommended settings for the amount of snow versus the amount of product, it's, it's about equal across the board on all these products. So we're gonna do four ounces of actual uh, product and then we're gonna be using about 32 ounces of water. So we have this uh, water basin set up. I've got a thermometer that I'm gonna show you guys here real quick. Uh, I'm a little retarded in the fact that the thermometer that I bought was for humans, so I apologize. Uh, this thermometer is only gonna measure uh, between 50 degrees and 110. Um, as you can see right now, I just turned it on. It probably isn't going to measure because this water, <laughs> it's a little cold. Um, but what we're testing is, does the, does the ice melt well in the water? Um, but also, do we see a temperature raise when we put it in? So it takes about 10 seconds to, to get any reading of the water. And as you can see, that L uh, just goes for low and I'll... Uh, you can hear it beeping. I don't know if you guys can hear that in TV land, but it means it's done. Um, and we know that the water is below 50 degrees. Now, if I just stick it in my tongue real quick, just to show you guys, it works. And I didn't leave it in there for very long, but let's start out with uh, four ounces of the purple heat. So let me grab my little measuring cup, measure that out. <sighs> I don't know. What do you think? Uh, do let's do the ice bomb because that's we'll stick to salts versus products that have manganese in it. And we have roughly, let's see. What is that? About five ounces. So we'll go five, five, and five. So we'll put that in that cup. While we're applying the water here, I'm going to move on to the other product which is the Max, whoops, the Max Green, and too much, well, there is that, about five ounces there, so we're going to pop it in here, and then we're going to move on to the pellet owl, do the same test lost it and we're a little high and five so I want to make sure that it's mixed up a little bit and again the, the test on this one has to do more with the heat does it actually heat up or does it just dissolve from what we talked about earlier, the salt, I don't really expect much because it's more of a salinity issue to make sure that the water doesn't turn back to ice. So we'll take the thermometer, turn that on, got on low, whoops, 
let it sit there. We'll give it its 10 seconds of fame. Just to make sure we're consistent, we'll make sure it's done beeping at us. And again, if you're just looking at this, if it's below 50 degrees, it's not going to tell us any temperature rating. So on this one, we're not expecting much. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Oh, there it goes. So, and as you can see, it's still on the low setting. So we'll reset that. We'll go over here. Now this is our, uh, our ice away max green. Um, it's been stirred. We'll, we'll get it in here. Put the thermometer in here. Now, I don't know if it's going to show on the thermometer or not, but there is a noticeable difference. If I were a betting man, the water is about 40 degrees. Um, I do feel a difference in temperature between the ice bomb water and this water, but it wasn't super, like it wasn't like over the top noticeable. But there is a difference, but we do know that it's below 50 degrees. So it's not moving the water a significant amount. Um, moving on over to the uh, Pelladow. Turn that, just get it reset. We're back to the low setting and immediately, <laughs> it went above the 110 degree marker. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll reset it again, but initially it sat, and we'll, we'll go back to this, and we'll get our low rating, and it's pretty immediate. We know we're below 50 degrees, and the second we touch this, it goes from 103. Oh, we're above that. This thing is cooking, and so the nice part about this application, and I'll, I'll turn this around, the nice part about using this solution is that you can really just take it and melt ice. So we'll go back outside and I'll, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. It's hot. And I think as a homeowner, this is more of our expectation on what it should be doing. So let's just take this chunk of ice here and you can physically see it just melt away i mean it is just obliterating it um let's go to something a little bit harder to tell or something with a little bit more ice as a homeowner but this stuff it's rated to actually go through two inches of ice in 15 minutes and that's why it's amazing um let's let's look at these chunks over here at the very end, and I'm just picking a random spot. And pour it over. And you can see it just immediately starts cutting it. And it's still hard, I mean the ice is hard, but you can see it's starting to break away. But you can actually take this and you can melt it and put it in a backpack sprayer which is really cool for owners. And you can spray it into a brine solution and get rid of a lot of this ice. Well guys, the verdict is in. My suggestion, if you really want an ice melt, use the calcium chloride. That's gonna be your best bet. Um, you can use it as a straight pellet or you can melt it down. But the proof is in the pudding, I mean, it went up to 110 degrees right off the bat within 30 seconds of a water solution. If you like my channel and you like these videos, please hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button. But this is Pest and Lawn Ginger. Ice melt, you're doing it wrong. Have a good day.